Hey guys, my name is Hesham and this is Dr. Tell Me Why, a medical channel where I explain the science behind how you can live better, stronger and healthier, hopefully allowing you to avoid all doctors, except for me. Today I'll speak to you about chronic stress and how chronic stress can affect your brain impairing memory, decision making and attention. It's a pretty stressful time that we find ourselves living in. Everyone I speak to seems to be stressed out about one thing or another. And with the pandemic coming to a close and people going back to work, this feels like the perfect time to tackle this thorny subject. Because I honestly don't think I know a single person who is the best version of themselves while they are stressed. And so today I'll be explaining exactly why that's the case. Just a heads up, this video will be part one of a three part series that I am planning. This time next week I will be publishing a video about physical exercise and how physical exercise can prevent or relieve much of the cognitive damage that chronic stress can cause. So if you would like to see that then make sure you subscribe and hit the bell icon to be notified of all my future videos. I don't publish much, just once a week. Part of your body's response to stressful situations, whether they be physical or psychological, is to release large amounts of glucocorticoids like cortisol into your bloodstream. For the longest time, scientists were adamant that these stress hormones were unable to cross the blood-brain barrier, and thus could not affect the brain nor the brain's functions. There was this false belief that the brain occupied a privileged position, seemingly above being touched by the effects of bodily stress and stress hormones. This all changed however in 1968 when Bruce McEwen published his seminal paper in the science journal Nature. In 1968 McEwen and his research team were able to show that stress hormones like cortisol were indeed able to cross the blood-brain barrier and could alter the expression of multiple genes in the hippocampus, a region of the brain that plays a vital role in both learning and in memory. We now know that glucocorticoid or stress hormone receptors are found all over the brain, including in the hippocampus, the amygdala and the prefrontal cortex. Furthermore, multiple studies have confirmed that stress hormones can result in impairments in decision making and in memory and in attention. Studies on both humans and animals suggest that prolonged periods of extreme stress can indeed change your brain anatomy resulting in a smaller hippocampus and a smaller prefrontal cortex, two brain regions that play a vital role in memory and in decision making. The scientists observed that chronic stress had the capacity through the action of stress hormones to force nerve cells into undergoing irreversible apoptosis or programmed cell death and the nerve cells that survived were found to have fewer connections to the nerve cells around them, potentially impeding their ability to communicate and to relay information across the brain. Stress hormones were also found to inhibit neurogenesis and weaken connections between neurons in the dentate gyrus, an area of the brain that continues to produce new neurons throughout adulthood. Yes. Contrary to what you have been told, there are indeed areas of your brain that never ever stop growing. And scientists suspect that glucocorticoids do this by dramatically elevating the expression of one key neurotransmitter, glutamate. Now glutamate is the most abundant excitatory neurotransmitter found in your brain and your brain needs it to function but, as always, too much of a good thing is almost always bad. And too much glutamate means far too much excitement in your brain. Think of it as you overloading your computer at home by opening too many large applications at the same time. This abuse overheats your computer and it will crash. Unless maybe it's a new M1 MacBook. Same thing with your brain, except that it's your nerve cells that are crashing, sorry, I mean dying. Hence, chronic stress and the abundance of glutamate that comes with it is neurotoxic. And this is where this idea of toxic stress, or stress that is so overwhelming that it begins to damage the brain architecture that is meant to deal with it, comes from. One area of the brain however that behaves differently from the hippocampus and the prefrontal cortex in response to stress is the amygdala, 
which plays a vital role in the processing and storage of emotionally arousing or fear-related memories. The amygdala in response to stress actually increases in size and becomes hyperactive, with its neurons making more and not fewer connections. A similar response to what is observed in the brains of individuals who suffer from chronic anxiety or PTSD. Which may be why merely thinking back to a particularly stressful time in your life is enough to arouse feelings of anxiety or fear many, many, many years later. Now, of course, not all individuals will react to the same exact stressful situation in the same exact way. I think this past year has perfectly illustrated this point with some people flourishing during the pandemic and during the lockdowns, while others really struggle to cope. And there is this wonderful idea going around at the moment of reactive genes. The idea basically is that some people among us possess these reactive genes that make them extra sensitive to the environment around them. If these people happen to grow up in a supportive environment with loving parents and not having to worry about deprivation, these reactive genes will be epigenetically modified to become resilience genes, making that child grow up to be more resilient to stressful life events experienced in their adult life. However, if the environment that person grows up in is not supportive, these same genes can become vulnerability genes making an individual more vulnerable to stressful life events. It's important to realize that these are the same genes giving dramatically different outcomes, depending on the context that they are placed in, and when that context takes place. This is because different parts of your brain will develop at dramatically different stages during your child and your teen years. For example, your hippocampus will typically develop most between birth and two years of age, while your amygdala continues to develop until your early 20s, but is at its most vulnerable at age 10. So should something happen during these critical developmental windows, like the death of a parent for example, the part of the brain that is developing the most at that point will undergo extensive remodeling to make it more vulnerable to the effects of stress later in adult life. The way I personally picture it is this. Stress experienced as a child has the potential to do irreversible damage to the brain structures that are meant to cope and deal with stress. And so stressful events that are experienced as an adult don't end up resolving and actually end up snowballing. And adults are not safe either because starting from age 30, the brain begins to age starting with the hippocampus and stressful life events during adulthood can accelerate the aging process. Several studies found that adults living with mild cognitive impairments typically had higher levels of blood cortisol, the stress hormone that I mentioned at the beginning of this video, compared to healthy controls. And adults who had Alzheimer's disease had even higher levels of blood cortisol, indicating that stress hormones could very well play a role in brain aging. But what do you think? Tell me in the comments below if you think that stress hormones could be responsible for some of the pathologies that are observed with Alzheimer's disease. Of course, not all stress is bad. Challenging tasks at school or at work are often considered really stressful, but are often short-lived and can be immensely rewarding, providing a lot of room for personal growth. But one of the best ways to reduce the cognitive damage that is caused by toxic or traumatic stress is through physical exercise. For example, physical exercise has been found to increase neurogenesis in the hippocampus, one of the main areas of the brain to be negatively affected by stress. And if you would like to learn more about the protective role that physical exercise can have, then you should subscribe and hit the bell icon to be notified of that video that's coming out next week. My name is Hashem and this is Dr. Tell Me Why. Thank you all for watching. This was super fun. And don't forget to give this video a thumbs up and subscribe if you have not done so already. And see you all next week. But until then, just do me a favor and relax.